We know we're in the grip of a cost of living crisis. But the question is, is your status in society now dictated by your bank balance? Back in the day, the class system was based upon your education, aspirational values, your family's history and much more. Education, of course, another factor. But that's tonight's big question. Do we still have a class system in the United Kingdom? And if so, how does it operate? To debate this, I'm delighted to welcome lawyer and writer Helen Dale and historian Dr David Starkey. Uh, great to have both of you with me. And if I could start with you, uh, Helen Dale, uh, you've got a kind of useful perspective on this because you're based in the UK, but you are Australian. Does Britain still have a class system? Yes, it does. Very much so. Um, more notably than Australia does. But Australia also has a class system. And this tends to be a characteristic that Australians tell themselves they don't have a class system, but it turns out that they actually do. It's just constituted a bit differently from it is from the way it is here. I will make one point, and I'll recommend a book if people are interested in the statistics. This is Gregory Clark's The Sun Also Rises, a economic history of social class. And what he did was analyse surnames, odd surnames, ones that are easy to track across countries all around the world, as diverse as the UK, China, and across much of Europe, but even places like Japan and Australia. And one of the things he found, and my own birth name, because Dale is a pen name, my own birth name, which ends in V-I-L-L-E, which uh, Professor Starkey will be aware is one of your classic Norman French names. Um, stay social status tends to persist on average for about eight centuries. And it takes a very long time to get rid of. In other words, people who've floated to the top historically, even when you have quite radical redistributive policies, they tend to stay there. And you have to be aware of how difficult it is to use social policy to change social class. And you also get a related phenomenon, and this is something you see also in Australia of high immigration, is when you bring immigrants into your country that are from high social classes in their own civilization, whether it could it's Nigeria or China, people tend to forget that these people in other countries also have social class. It's not just people in, in Britain or, or America. Um, what you get is if you bring people from their upper classes to our country, and then you have affirmative action policies that were originally designed to help the descendants of the Windrush generation who are descendants of slaves, is that the opportunities don't go to the descendants of the Windrush generation. They perpetrate a class system that existed, for example, in Nigeria, in Britain, because the opportunities go to upper class people from their civilization. Class is very persistent and very hard to get rid of. That's basically the key finding of The Sun Also Rises, which is a play on the name of the yeah. Hemingway novel, but yeah. he calls it Sun rather than S U N. Um, it's very well worth the read and it is very persistent. And this has even existed in, in a country like Australia, which has made radical redistributive efforts to try to stop it from existing to the degree that it did historically in the United Kingdom in Australia. Uh, Dr Starkey, didn't Margaret Thatcher do away with the class system? A very optimistic view. She didn't even manage to abolish the trade unions and she tried pretty hard. And I found uh, what Helen was saying interesting, but of course it's a series of huge, easy generalizations. The thing that's peculiar about Britain and particularly peculiar about England is we can see uh, many of the sort of shapes of a class system very much surviving. Look at Ascot, look at the carriage procession, look at so much of what happened in the Jubilee. But the reason that our class system survived, uh, and this cuts very much against what Helen was saying, was precisely that it was so open, that it was so easy to rise within it. If you look at continental Europe, the class systems there are deliberately destroyed by revolution. In Germany, it's actually illegal to use noble titles. So you have to incorporate your prince actually in your names. You, you, you christen yourself Prince von something or another, um, but it's illegal to use them. Here, because it, the system was so open, it was open 
open to talent, and above all, it was open to wealth, and it was open to education, and it was open to people like me. Um, uh, we tended to alter accents, we altered behaviour. I mean, what is also very clear here, that class in Britain is complexly signified. Money is by no means the only indicator. Most of the people who go to Ascot would not be allowed at a decent dinner table. The women in particular are crass and vulgar. Their skirts are the wrong length. They get pissed. Their heels are dreadful and they fall over. And they look as though they come from Newcastle. And I come from the other side of the Pennines and I was born in a castle. So let, let, let's put all that together because... Again, one of the ways our class system operates is by class signifiers, which are accent, the way you dress, how you eat, how you use cutlery. 